Hey, how you doing? Anthony Ferrar here to help you create sci-fi. Um, a while back I did a blaster build video and I got a lot of requests to show you how to make the laser blast. I wanted to keep it simple and accessible, so I'm going to show you a way to do it just right in the editing program. You don't have to get any third-party plugins or go to another graphics program like After Effects or something. We're going to do it right here. I'm doing it in Premiere. I like Premiere, you know, the Adobe suite because I do use Photoshop and I do use After Effects, but this we're going to do right in the editing program. If you don't have Premiere, it'll work in whatever you use. The steps will be the same, just um, the effects might be called something different. All right, so let's get started. All right, let's hop into the sequence. Let's create a new color map. Let's make it white and we're going to save it as blast ring. Now we're going to go into the effects and we're going to type in cell pattern. We're going to take that and drop it in. The presets are fine. And we're going to grab one more effect, type in blur, find Gaussian blur, and we're going to drop that in and we're going to adjust that just till you get something like a cloud. Just a quick note on the adjustments that we make within each step. I know uh, an exact numeric value would be ideal, but it really depends on the source footage. The opacity could be different depending on your image, the number of keyframes, how long something is on and off. It's really just going to depend on your footage. So are you cool with that? We're cool. Let's get back to it. We're going to just trim this down to about 12 frames. Now we're going to create a round mask. So we're going to go into the control panel and we're going to write in opacity settings in Premiere is where the mask always lives. You don't have to grab it from anywhere. And we're going to take the circle and we're going to make a circle almost filling the whole frame, feather it, but just make sure not to clip off the top. So reduce the size. Now we're going to have to nest this. You do that by right clicking and choosing nest. Once we create that nest, we're going to repeat the same steps and we're going to make a little cutout in the center. So now that's done, we're going to put that aside. Now we're going to get into the blasts. We're going to create the muzzle flashes. This is uh, the fun part. We're going to create another white solid. We're going to call this flash, muzzle flash, pew pew, you know, whatever works for you. Go back to that blast ring nest that we just made. Double click on that and that'll bring up the source clip, the first one that we made that has the effects on it. So if you click in that, copy the effects that we already set, and then we're going to set them into this white solid that we just called muzzle flash. So now we're going to take the blade tool and we're going to cut it into three segments. Each are one frame long. Let's start with the second flash. Turn off this layer so we don't look at all white. And I like to go right before the recoil, right? So you have the recoil and then there's one frame before that. So that's where I start this main flash. Now we're going to go back into the opacity click that mat and we're going to draw a shape. So we're going to use this pen tool and we're going to just create some points and just make it look like a lightning kind of explosion, very cartoony looking. And then once we create that mask, we're going to adjust the feathering, the opacity, just so that it feels right. And a good rule of thumb is when you're adjusting things like this, get it where you want it and then just pull it back a little. So now we're going to take this third segment that we made. We're just going to put that aside for now and we're going to duplicate this one we just made. And now this is going to be the little residual after the muzzle flash. Duplicate it, put it right after, and then we're just going to adjust the mask a little, maybe blur it out a little more just so it's a little lighter. And we're going to push it just a little forward to kind of sell that forward movement. Once we have that, we're going to go to the first frame that we created. So that's the one right before the muzzle flash and that we're going to take our pen tool again, turn off the layer and we're just going to draw like a little dot, a little square, just a little forward motion. All right. So great. That's looking good. That's looking real good. Okay. So in this next step, we're going to add the laser beam. Now you could just do this step, ignore everything else and just do this and that'll be fine. But you know, we're trying to make some special sauce here rather than just ketchup. So let's do a little extra. So now we go back to that frame that we set aside. We're going to stretch it out again. 10 or 12 frames is kind of our ballpark that we work within. And we're going to turn it off. 
go to the mat, get the pen tool. You should be pretty good at this by now. And I start with my point at the muzzle. And then my end point, I, I put off frame, or if we're shooting at somebody or something, end it at the target. And then we're gonna create two more points, and just make a thin, long rectangle. And I like to taper it out a little at the end, but again, whatever looks good to you. Then we're just gonna adjust the feathering. We just want like a fine laser blast. So now we set the blur, we set the opacity, it looks very lasery. Go into the effects and type in crop. We're gonna get the crop tool. So we're gonna put this on our laser and we're gonna slide the left until we see our beam being cut off or the right, it depends which direction your laser is going. And then we're just gonna feather it a little just so it's pleasing and it's not a hard edge. So now we go back to the first frame, we set a keyframe, that's our in, and we should again adjust left or right depending on our direction. Then we're gonna go to our 12th frame or our 10th frame, our last frame, and create it out. So now we go back to the first frame, go ahead one frame, set our second keyframe. Now this will be the opposite. If we started with left, now we do the right, and then we bring it right up till we have this little dash here. And so now we play that back and forth and you see how the laser now shoots. And again, we're gonna tweak, adjust till it looks pleasing. Okay, so now that's all working. Again, this is another additional step, some extra special sauce. We're going to add this residual ring. We're gonna start the ring on that main muzzle flash. We're gonna add a keyframe. We're gonna bring the scale down to just a little bit larger than the, the gun. And we're gonna center it on the muzzle. Then we're gonna go to the end, 10 or 12 keyframes away, and we're gonna expand that. So now this one is very much according to the source footage, how many frames you leave it on, how you fade it off. So what I'm doing in this one is we increase the size. Now we just play it back, Maybe it needs to be a few frames shorter. Fade it out, fade it in. This effect we do not want in your face. It should just be a residual layer. So we do a little tweaky tweaky. We bring it on. Maybe I'm gonna adjust this. And then in my case, with my source footage, a perfect circle just did it look great. So now I'm going to go back and I'm going to add another keyframe that allows me to adjust the length and width independently. And I'm just gonna make this stretch out a little bit at the end. And I tweak that around and yeah, this is looking great. Okay, again, this next step you can skip, but it adds a lot of value. We're selling the idea that this weapon is so massive and powerful that it's bending our field of vision. And you know, we're already in here, so come on. Let's just add this. If you click in the in the project, right click and a new adjustment layer. So we're gonna take this layer and we're gonna put it over the, the ring. We're gonna make it the same length as the, the ring. So go into effects, type in spherize, and this is what's gonna give us the, the bulge. This is what's gonna bow the image. So we bring this on, we're gonna keyframe it on and off. At the first keyframe, we're just gonna shrink it down until it's very small, a little bit bigger than the muzzle, and we're gonna place it over the muzzle. Now we're gonna go forward about three frames to the, the height of our flash, and then we're gonna scale it up. And then we're gonna go a few frames, and we're just gonna set another keyframe. Now we're gonna add in a little bit of a wave. So now we go into effects, and we type in wave warp, and we bring that in. Now we lay this on the same adjustment layer, and we're gonna follow the same keyframes. On this one, we'll start with the second one, because this way we can adjust our look of the wave. So let's adjust our height, our width, and that's looking good. And then we're gonna go back to the keyframe, and then we're just gonna reduce this almost down to nothing. Make sure that you pin the corners. And then as a final step to this, I tweak the opacity on and off. And what that does is it gives you this doubling effect. We're gonna scale this on and off. So now go to the first frame of our effect and just cycle it through a few times. Just make whatever adjustments you need. Make sure it plays well. But once all that is working, I like to move the adjustment layer and the ring below the laser blast so it doesn't affect them. But this is personal preference. I would try it both ways and see what works best for you. 
Finally, we get to color the blasts. We go into effects, type in tint, drop this to your main blast since it's the largest. So this depends on the vibe of your show. If it's tongue and cheek sci-fi, maybe you go like neon pink. If it's very serious and scary, maybe it's a subdued blue or an ominous green. And while you set your color, you're still going to be tweaking. Maybe the opacity should come down a little now that you're seeing it colorize. Keep in mind that the effect is evolving with each step. And with each step, we take an opportunity to fine tune. So once you get your color working, and you copy and paste that color across all the elements. Okay, so now we're gonna add some sound effects. You might say, what? We're doing a visual tutorial. I know, but there's something about the sound effect that affects how you see the effect. I don't know why, but it blends it all together and it's a real important step. So I'm trying to keep this simple, no cost, so what we're going to do is I'm going to send you to a pretty cool free library online. So we're going to go to Google. You're going to Google freesounds.org. Sign up. I've been using this for a long time. I've never gotten an email from them. Create an account. So now type in laser blast and you'll find a few and pick, you know, a handful. Ones you think will work, ones that might work because when you bring it in, it might not turn out the way you thought. Now we're going to lay them in and just watch this cycle through a few times and grin really wide ear to ear because now we reap the rewards first any final tweaks right because now we're going to take this little package of awesome and we're going to copy and paste it throughout our project wherever else blasts occur same thing one frame before the recoil we're going to set that in and of course they're not going to line up so we go into the controls and we just adjust the x and y position the scale if we need to you may have to rotate it a bit as well little special spice on our special sauce go into effects type in 3d effects grab basic 3d and drop it on your ring of awesomeness okay so now you can tweak this ring in 3d and we just want to adjust it a little so that it looks like it was captured by this camera so we want to match the camera angle a little bit and that looks good so now you could be done but i recommend one final step that really really brings this all to life in my opinion we're gonna go back out to google we're gonna get two more elements we're gonna google free film grain so just find one that's a high resolution at least your project size and uh download a free one we're gonna bring that into the project Next, go Google Deadpool Camera Shake. And these are free preset camera shakes that were made for Deadpool. And these are pretty tight. Now back in our project, you have all your blasts in, watch it through a few times, and you put them everywhere in your project where you wanted them. And now we're gonna export this, a full resolution version, export it, and we're gonna call this clean. Render, render, export, export. So bring it back, lay it in the timeline. Now we take our film grain, we put it over the top and we're gonna go into the opacity. We should know where that is by now. And we're gonna set this to screen. Now we're gonna bring the opacity way down, like between three and five. Great, that's what looks good here. And then we're gonna right click on presets, import and navigate to where you just put that file and wham, bam, there it is. And there's a few different ones. Again, we're just gonna audition different ones, see which one works for us. For me, the handheld camcorder one is working good, so I'm gonna go with that. Okay, let's just take a time out. So why are we doing this? We're adding the grain because we have these two elements that were not captured together. The blast is essentially just a color square and it happens quickly, right? So it works, but it's just not 100%. So what the grain does is it fuses it all together so that our eye sees it as one uniformed image. Further, the camera shake, what that does is now we have our image moving left to right, up and down, and the blast that we imposed on the footage is now in concert. And subconsciously, our brain sees that as, oh, the camera must have captured this actually happening. So, that's why I think those steps are important.
moving on so now export this as your final master that you will do your additional graphics and sound work on and now watch the awesomeness <laughs> I'm very happy with that. Okay, so if you found this video useful, like, subscribe, share, leave a comment of what you'd like to see in the future, and go to the website and sign up for the newsletter. Just remember, I'm here to help create sci-fi. Let's watch it one more time. <laughs> I love this stuff. <laughs>